Okay, um, so welcome to tonight's webinar, which is the third in the series of webinars that Layers of London are putting on throughout um, April and the, the current situation with the, the lockdown. Um, tonight's one will focus on adding content to the Layers of London website and we'll have a good explore of the different types of content that's up, the difference between records and collections and hopefully by the end of it people will feel confident in how to not only add a record um, but join in with the site and uh, explore and enjoy Layers of London in all its, all its value really. Um, so if you haven't used Zoom before, just a quick mention that there's a chat facility which you can click on and leave a question or a message, a comment, and there's also a question and answers uh, box as well which you can tick and you can um, leave any comments in there to your questions. Um, okay, we'll get started. So Layers of London is a free website which is funded by the National Heritage Lottery Fund and the website address is layersoflondon.org, which you can see up here. And when you type that in, you'll come to the homepage, which is this page here, and you will um, see that um, from the homepage, uh, we have our series of maps, which we've collected together. And um, it just runs through a few of those to give you an idea of some of the different layers that we have on Layers of London. Um, and as we scroll down the page, we have this area telling you how to tell your story. There's a couple of boxes which focus on the crowdsourcing elements of how to um, help contribute different layers in their own right. One's uh, coming to an end now. It's the aerial photography from the RAF uh, aerial photographs from after World War II. Uh, but there's plenty still to do on the booth's uh, poverty map and helping us to trace buildings and colour those in. Our webinar next week will focus on that one. And tonight we will focus on this telling of your story. And just before we do that, uh, part of that will be tagging records and the uh, different ways you can explore the content and search for things. So there's this search facility from the homepage here. And what it's really all about is the collections tonight. And here are a few of our highlighted collections, including Dickens London, um, a collection put together by the London Metropolitan Archives and a collection which we'll take a closer look at from the Friends of um, Hackney Library and Archive, uh, who have gathered together records relating to Hackney's history. So there's our home page. And as we scroll up to the top, uh, the easiest way to get into the actual Layers of London site proper is by clicking on the word map up here. So I'll do that. And this getting started screen appears. And when, what you can see here, are two things really. You can see the base map of where records and collections, the pins have been dropped, very similar to Google Maps. And as I move it, more of these appear like so. Uh, let's just click on, oops, let's just go back to this map here. Because what I wanted to show was in the, on the left-hand side here, there's what we call the tray. And the tray is where you can see some of those highlighted collections and those records. Um, as a little sample of the, the full record, which we can click on in a moment. Now, when you hover, indi hover over individual records in this tray, such as this bombing map 1939 to 45, you should notice that the pin, the corresponding pin on the map has turned red. So I'll just move off it and you can see that pin is changing to a red color. So that's an indication of where this record has been dropped, where this record has been pinned onto the, the base map on the right hand side. Um, if we have a look at a collection, so I'll click on this one here. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, sorry, a collection is a series of records gathered together and they are indicated by these blue brick-like pins as opposed to the black individual record pins here. And when we click on one of those, let me click on this one here. So this is a Christmas collection. If we open up that one, the records within that collection appear on the base map when you open it up. So this one only has five different records in, but you can see what those look like, like so. So 
let's go um, back to the, the getting started page here and let's take a little look at some of these collections that we've put together or people have been putting together um, if we scroll down to this hackney history one here if i click on that you can see that within the hackney history collection there are 287 records which have been put together and they all appear on the base map on the right hand side now as we um, hover over some of these you can see once again the color changes and they turn red and then when we zoom into a particular record let's just click on this one up here we can see that uh, this is what some records start to look like so this is a very basic record which has the three mandatory pieces of information we have a date we have a title and then we have a description of what this uh, record relates to down here um, some records have a bit more detail. Let's just have a look at, uh, let's go for this one. So this record here has that mandatory information again, the date, the title and the description. But this one has a bit more information. So this one has an image associated with this record, which are the double eagles, this Hackney Horde, uh, has a larger description here. This one has been taken from Hackney Histories, um, volume or issue 17 and hopefully as we scroll down we can see that that issue that volume has been placed into the sources and attribution as well and this should be a hyperlink that if we open a new link it brings up the hackney history page here so there are several things you can do with individual records and collections um, it's also been tagged in myths and legends and it belongs to that Hackney History Collection here, which if we click on that, brings up that collection's homepage as well. So that's the basic concept of what a collection looks like. And this was a really important part of our projects when we set this up. We really wanted to capture um, the histories that aren't necessarily um, available in uh, archives libraries, although this particular collection is, but we really wanted to offer the possibility for anybody to upload any kind of content relating to their own history, their own interests, their own memories. And tonight, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna uh, upload a record and show you that whole process. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna start again from our homepage. Now I'm signed in, but I'm gonna sign out for a moment because to upload a record or a collection you do need to have an account with layers of london it's really simple to do and it's completely free to create one so if we click on create an account here you can see how to do so you start by choosing a title like so then you fill in your first name your last name email password and confirm that password and then uh, we ask you to agree to our contributor agreement which if i just click on this you can see includes things which are pretty standard that the website isn't used for anything illegal doesn't compromise security of the website um, the most important thing i suppose is that all material added to layers of london will be licensed under creative commons attribution license here so i'll, I'll talk a bit more about that uh, in a moment um, but once you approve and agree to that, then you have your account. And if you've already got an account, you simply log in like so. So I'll log in with our layers of, whoops, our layers of London account here. And let's just, we are now signed in. And that allows us to start uploading a record. Now to do that, once again, we go back to our map page and we use our navigation panel on the left-hand side here. So beneath the getting started, the layers, the collections, et cetera, et cetera, we'll see that there's this add record tag. So if I click on this, our map suddenly widens and becomes larger. And it says, choose the location of your record at the top. And you'll notice that my mouse has turned into a crosshair. So now this allows me to find a location where I want to pin and post my record. Now to do that, I can navigate around the map simply by zooming in and moving the map around or I can search for a place like so up here um, and so tonight I'm going to search for Archway 
and I'm going to click on that and it brings us to the area in North London, Archway. Now, if I have a historical record that I want to map, this current OpenStreetMap base map is, a, is, is good, but it might be more useful to upload a layer from the past to help us find a particular building or spot. So I can go to my layer directory over here and for instance, I might want to scroll right down and click on the OS map from the 1940s to 60s. And that gives me a bit more detail, including the street numbers here um, to help me find an exact location to where I want to place my record. Um, I should say that when you place a record onto the map, it doesn't pin itself to any particular layer, it pins itself to the base map. So it will appear regardless of what layers are uploaded as well. So even if your record relates to um, something that happened in the uh, 20, in the 2000s, um, it will still appear as a pin when you upload the medieval map, um, even though it doesn't relate to that period. Um, okay, let me turn off this layer because I have a record that I want to pin in Archway tonight and I'll just post it here for the moment, like so. So once you decide where you want to place your record, up pops this edit record page, you can fill in the title, you can fill in the year and a description. Now there are the three bits of mandatory information that we need. And tonight I'm going to be uh, creating a record relating to our uh, current campaign that we've got, which is called London Arrivals. So if I click on my Word document here, there's a record relating to this person, and I will add that into the title here. The year of the record relates to 1999, and then there's a description which I will also take from my Word document down here. And I'll paste that in as well. <coughs> so in its very most basic form, this is a Layers of London record. And if I scroll down to the very bottom now, I can save that as a draft and we can see how it appears. Like we have our title, we have our date that the record relates to, and then a description of what this record is about. And this London Arrivals project is looking at uh, people's uh, first moves to London, why they came here, what they're expecting, did it live up to their expectations and any stories relating to their, their first arrival into London. Um, now this is, this is fine as a basic record, but we might want to add a bit more information. Um, we might want to add it to a specific collection um, and we might want to do a little bit more with this particular record. Um, I also have realised that I've posted this record in an incorrect location. I actually want to move it a little bit further down the road. So to re-edit this record, I click on edit. I scroll right down to the bottom of this record and click on edit. And it brings up the edit record page again. If I want to change the location and edit that, I hover over the, the location box and I click edit here. And I'm back to where my crosshair is. Now I know that, um, let me just check, but I think it's Wedmore Street here, which is down here. I don't necessarily know the address of this record and that's fine. If you don't know a specific address, you can just click um, on the street and uh, try and get as close a location as possible. So I will click here for this one. Now I've moved the location, but I'm back in my edit reticle page. And uh, if I had a source and attribution for this, I can link that in here. Um, for tonight's record, I, uh, I don't at the moment, but what I do want to do is add a image to make this record look a little bit nicer. And because this record relates to someone who moved into a flat in Archway, I'm going to upload a photograph of Archway in North London. So to do that, I've searched for a image using Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia Commons here. And this is a image that is shared under a Creative Commons license. So I will go to this page. I'll just save that image into my desktop. And I'll go back into my Layers of London records. Sorry, I'll go back to my uh, 
where I found this image. I'll copy that URL and I can place that into the source and attribution here. And when I click on add media, we have this yellow box that opens and I'll upload a file. Now if I go to my uh, desktop and here's my image, I'll open that up and up pops the picture of the archway tower here. And when I click on that image, um, we can put in a title, which I'll put archway tower. I might have that as my caption as well, like so. And I want to credit this image to the person who took that photograph. So back into my um, source page from Wikimedia, uh, Wikimedia Commons, and I'll scroll uh, down. And it should tell me who uh, took this photo. Where did it say that? Photographer. So for now, I'll just put Justin C. And I'll put that in there. We have the link to the original file up here as well. And we can set that as the primary image like so. And if I save that as a draft, it suddenly looks a little bit nicer like so, where we've got our image of the archway tower, we have our description, so on and so forth. And we have our sources and attribution in this box as well. Now there are a few further things we can also do to our record here. So if I click on edit again, I can scroll down a little further and we can now add this to a collection. So there are collections where, uh, which you can make your own private collections or you can make public collections as well. And if we go to the public collections and then choose a collection, as I scroll down, fingers crossed, we should have London arrivals here. And I'll just click on that. And now this record belongs to the London Arrivals collection, like so. Um, I may want to tag this record as well. So if I open up this box, um, if I go into uh, gender, ethnicity, identity, because this is an arrival, it's about migration. I'll click on that migration tag and we'll see a number one comes up there. You can tag records as several things. It doesn't just have to be one thing. Um, so, um, if it was relating to, I don't know, uh, if there was a mention of a school in there, for instance, you could open up education and tag schools as well, something along those lines. Um, okay, um, now if I save this as a draft, I can just double check and see that it is part of the London Arrivals collection. It's been tagged, it has our source, it has our description, our title, it has a nice image. But sometimes there aren't always images available. Um, so another thing you can do in terms of images, if I, um, if I, oops, if I try and open up a, another page here, let me just open up this one and go to layers London. Because our maps are squared are shared under Creative Commons license. Uh, if I type in Archway again, one thing we can do, if I go to Wedmore Street, and close this, is I can simply take a screenshot by pressing Control and Print Screen, and then save in this in something like Paint, like so. And I can crop that image just to get the street that I'm looking for here and we'll crop that, save that as a picture, archway. And then if I go back to my record here, I'll edit that once more time, one more time. I'll add media and documents. And this time I have to remember where I, oh gosh, where did I put that record? <laughs> Um, let me go into pictures. Uh, I think I had it here. Archway, open that file. And we should see that screenshot has been added to our records as well. So if I set that as the primary image, um, all being well, if I save that as a draft, it should now have changed that. And we have our screenshot of Wedmore Street as our primary image. And I'm quite happy with that as a record now. So 
The final thing I'll do is once more go into my edit record page and this time I will click publish and that record is now available um, on the Layers of London website as a published record part of our London Arrivals collection. So if I click on London Arrivals here we can see that there are uh, if I scroll out several records relating to this theme and our new one now features as part of uh, part of this collection here. Um, let me just check the uh, questions. Uh, okay, so um, if we go to, uh, if I just close this for the moment, I'll just quickly show you how you can create a collection as well. So if once you upload a record, you want to create a new collection, once again, you go over to the left hand side and have a look at the navigation panel and there's collections and create collections. If we click create a collection here, now you can simply fill in the name and I'm going to do my uh, favorite records. I'll just put in uh, my favorite records again here. And this now gives us the option of making it a public collection, which anybody can see. Um, it's one where anybody can edit and add records to, or it's one where only you can add records to. So um, for this collection, because it's my, my personal favorite ones, just I'm just gonna allow myself to edit this, and I'm gonna keep this as a private collection, so only I can see this one. So if I click Save, I've now created that collection. And if I, um, if I go back to this getting started here, and I'll just click on any record up here, what I should be able to do, once I scroll down here, if this is one of my favorite records, I can add it to a collection here. And in my collections, all being well, it now has my favorite records. If I click on that, this record now belongs to my favorite records, as well as these two public collections, which it had previously been uh, added to by somebody else. So I'll click done and I have a record in my, my private favorite collections as well now. Um, so that's the basic process really. First of all, you need to uh, have an account so you can create an account or sign in once you do. And then over to the map, left hand side to add a record, choose the location of your record, fill in the three mandatory bits of information, the title, the year, description. If you have a source and attribution, you fill that in. You can add media, you can add to collections, you can tag the records. Um, you can also add links. So let me just, uh, let me just type in just something random here, which allows me to show you the links. Uh, this allows you to link into other websites as well. So slightly different to the sources and attribution. So for instance, that record I wrote about the arrivals into Archway, if there was a website relating to a specific thing in Archway, like the Archway Tower, I could link that website into my related links because it's related to the record, not necessarily where I source the information from. Um, and and that's about it really. So uh, if there's any questions, feel free to pop them in the question and answers or the chat now and I will answer them. Um, so there was one question earlier saying, if we just quote the photo, is that enough to, uh, to use it um, with a link in to, via the sources and attribution? Um, yes, that is. So if we go to, the Wikipedia page again, you'll see that under a Creative Commons license, um, you're free to share and to copy, distribute and transmit this image, but you have to give it um, an attribution. So you must give appropriate credit. And we've given that credit both in the image itself and also by linking it into this, this original page. So it is really important that you do have permission to upload any images of those kind and they are already shared under Creative Commons license. Or if they aren't, you have permission from the original copyright holder to use that image. And, and once again, it's really important that you credit 
the original copyright holders. Um, so another question, if it's a picture that uh, is yours and it's your own private uh, picture that you've taken, then you don't necessarily need to put um, your name associated to that, to that record, but we would recommend that you do just so people know that um, you are the copyright holder for that picture. I say that because once uploaded to Layers of London, it can then be shared under the Creative Commons license. So if people want to share it on a blog or somewhere else, then without your name associated with it, they wouldn't be able to credit you for that image. So, so if, if whenever you can um, credit an image or a piece of work, then we, rec we ask that you do so. So a question relating to collections. If you create a private collection, does that mean that nobody else can see that? Uh, that is the case. A private collection is only visible for you as with your user account. Um, if you create a public collection, you then have two choices. And I'll just go into create a collection again to show you that. You have those two choices with a public collection where anybody can add to that collection or only you can add to that collection. So there's a little bit of control there as well. But with a private collection, um, automatically only you can add to that collection because nobody else can see that collection in the first place. Okay, let me have a look at some other questions. Um, so a question that if the um, if something that you're adding is on another website that's behind a paywall, then you can still reference that. And what we recommend, uh, well, as long as you have the copyright to um, to include it, an image, for instance, into your record, you do need to have that copyright permission. Uh, but if you have that copyright permission and the information is uh, behind a paywall, that's perfectly okay to reference that website. But what you can do in the description is just put a line saying that the source information is um, restricted or something along those lines. Uh, so likewise, if that information has come from something like a newspaper website or a university account website, then, um, then yeah, you can reference where you source that information from and put that in the sources and um, attribution. But obviously that hyperlink won't necessarily be available once you click into it. So um, it's worth adding something in the description saying that the source information is restricted. So a question about copyright of old postcard images of London. Um, if you uh, if you're not sure who holds the copyright, then um, well, usually it's the local archives. They can help out. We're trying to source uh, the original copyright for images, um, and uh, I would just be wary of putting anything up that you don't have the original copyright for, or you can't source in one respect, uh, or you don't have the original source for. Um, if you if you can source it though, and you do have an idea of where it came from, then yes, you can add that as a record, as long as you can credit it to somewhere. Um, so a question about uh, Lambeth Archives pictures, are they on the maps already? Um, I think there are some images from Lambeth Archives. Certain, there's, I can see one here of a, a collection of Lambeth fishermen. I'm not sure who uploaded those. And um, what I recommend you do is have a little search using our search records facility up here. And you can search for either a theme, a topic or a place. If you search for Lambeth, you can see if any images from Lambeth archives have already been um, added to the website. Uh, another question regarding the platform that the website is built on. So this, um, the information about who uh, built this website is a company called Error. Error made this and their link is down the bottom on this bit here. And then we've also used OpenStreetMap and MapTyler and the links for these 
different organizations are on the bottom right hand side. Um, if you're adding a record and you want to refer back to one of the layers that we have on Layers of London, then again, you can uh, put that in the description. So an example would be if you uploaded a record relating to a building that was damaged during World War II and that building is represented on the bomb damage map, then in your description, you can say a really good map to upload with this record would be the bomb damage map. So that's the best way you can link the records into the layers at the moment. And we really recommend you do this because it's really nice to, to have that link between the records and the maps whenever we can. So I'm just looking at some more questions in the chat. Um, So there's a question about editing the information in all the records of a particular collection at once. So sort of batch editing. Um, from as a user, you can't do that at the moment. Um, there's a there's a way to access all your records, and to do that, if you go to once signed in, if you go to your profile, which is on the left hand side over here you'll see oops just need to close a few things that you can have a tag a tab which is records and collections and that will allow you to quickly go in and edit those individual records like so um, but otherwise at the moment you can't edit batch records all in one go unfortunately Oh, I saw that, that's been answered already. <laughs> and let's have a look at the, the questions again. I think that might be the end of the current questions. So in that case, um, one further feature is that once you uh, have an account and once you're starting to upload the records, once again on the left hand side over here, you can click on either your profile, which brings up your records and collections like so, or you can click on your records and view the different records that you've created um, on your account and the summary, all the different ones here. And if you have your records open like so, the pins once again change colour on the right hand side when you hover over a particular record. Okay. A uh, question about bulk upload records. Unfortunately, at the moment, you can't upload records in bulk either. You have to do them individually. Um, so that's a feature that uh, we we may look at in the future um, but at the moment you can only upload upload one record at a time if anyone wants to have a recap over how to add content you can go to our help center from the home page which is up here and there's a free user guide which can be downloaded so using layers of london here you can download the guide which runs through that process of uploading the records create an account which i've gone through tonight and i should also say that this webinar has been recorded and uh, will be available on our youtube channel um, from tomorrow and to find those if you go to the get involved pages uh, you can see our events and here are our previous recordings and tonight's one will be added tomorrow in this space Um, a question about uh, prefixing records with certain titles. You don't have to do that at all. Tonight, I prefix my record with London Arrivals because the collection I wanted to add that record to um, is the London Arrivals hashtag. Um, however, you don't have to do that at all. A uh, title can be whatever you want. Um, so if you have a, a look, um, let's just go back here. We'll just have a quick look at a random record like so. So this is a record relating to a pub. 
and that's simply hope and anchor like so so it's entirely up to you what you want to put into your title and into your descriptions okay so one one more question here is there a way to have uh, different colors associated to different pins um, unfortunately there isn't a function to color different pins at the moment um, however using the collection uh, option if you if you wanted to group um, a series of records into sub records so um, let me try and show you an example of this if I go to this Hackney History collection here, um, so in the Hackney History collection, there are 287 records, but then I might want to create sub records relating to different areas in Hackney. So if there was one to do with Hackney Wick, I could take these five records here and create a Hackney Wick collection. They were still featuring this Hackney History collection, but then if I were to click on the Hackney Wick collection, it would only reveal those five records. So that's one way that you can um, sort of organize and, um, and reduce the amount of records that come up by adding sub collections. Uh, unfortunately, you can't color code collections at the moment. So you wouldn't be able to say, have all these 287 records up and then the Hackney ones would be green and the West Hackney would be red and Upper Clapton would be blue, for instance. So that's not possible at the moment, but one way to get around that is by creating these sub collections. Okay, I think we might uh, draw this webinar to a close now then. So uh, just to say thank you to everyone who attended some, uh, this evening and um, I hope you found that useful and I hope that's inspired you to start adding some records and, uh, and seeing what you can contribute to Layers of London. Um, we are hoping to run further webinars throughout uh, the next month and uh, please do visit the Institute of Stock Research's events page to find out more about those and, and once again um, all our webinars are recorded and are available on our YouTube channel with links on our Get Involved page here. So uh, thank you for attending, hope you've enjoyed it and do come back for more.